Hey, that pad down there. With the lights off, there are people unloading a ship. Probably another sublight contract haul. Could be drugs, could be bootleg Aetherwave cartridges. And they're just transferring cargo out where everyone can see? Legal or not, somehow the company always has its paperwork in order. Have you had a moment to look into that little opportunity I told you about on Roseway? You don't hurry up. Someone will get to snooping around there before you do. What's that? Speak up now. What'd you turn up? My stars, what a find. Fine picking like this deserves an equally fine payout. Go on, dearie, and don't spend it all in one place. Peaches and cream, if that isn't the most handsome bit of lethal engineering I've seen all week. That will go for a tie you some bits. A shame you didn't visit old Gladys first. That would have fetched a good price. I may have thrown in a batch of my famous sugar cookies just to sweeten the deal. If Auntie Cleo's exporting wraps from Monarch, golly me, someone's going to be in the soup when they get caught. Are you positive? Honest to goodness? Can't say I wasn't hoping for more. But I suppose it can't be helped. Law bless you for doing the legwork, sweetie. Don't forget your pal Gladys now. You can come visit any time. Fantastic. Do be careful with it, dear, as these keys tend to be a tad hard to acquire. You should have a chat with Lilia Hagen in the sublight offices. She's a dear. You'll love her. Now. Was there anything else? Won a charming copper kettle off that girl who runs the pub. She's a fierce arm wrestler, but she's no match for your pal Gladys. Welcome back, Captain. Now that you have acquired a nav key to Stellar Bay, would you like me to contact Dr. Wells? Well done. You'll love Monarch. Exotic climate, violent native species, fascinating culture, really. You'll need to speak with Hiram Blythe. He's known as the information broker, and for good reason. If anyone knows where I can find those chemicals, it's Hiram. I need those chemicals to revive the Hope's colonists. They can help us fight back against the board. They can help us set things right. If we don't put a stop to the board, they're going to drive this colony toward a complete societal collapse. You'll see what I mean when you arrive on Monarch. <laughs> no, never. Monarch is a hotbed of political activity. I can't imagine why Hiram set up shop there. Cuisine, perhaps? I certainly wouldn't call it boring, especially if your idea of fun involves navigating a hostile biosphere populated by carnivorous monsters. You'll want to hire the services of a skilled guide. 
I recommend a hunter by the name of Nioka. Frequents the drinking establishments of Stellar Bay. Very hard to miss. Once you have everything you need, make your way to Hiram Blythe's compound. Best of luck. Everyone on the Hope is counting on you. Make this conversation worth my time, Captain. Sure is. Welcome aboard, Contractor. One of my guys in Stellar Bay has a lead on some high-grade salvage, but he went dark before he could spill the goods. We arranged a drop at the Saltuna Warehouse's loading dock. Find whatever he left there and take it to Fallbrook. My gal Catherine will be expecting you. A few of my contractors run flights in there and out again, working around the board embargo. We keep the community lubricated with a steady supply of booze and unconventional erotica. Byzantium kids with more money than sense can thank Sublight for their good time. One of my guys filmed a raptodon grinding on an auto mech. Didn't end well for anyone, including the cameraman. When the board pulled out of Monarch, they buried or sealed anything they couldn't carry off world. Apparently, one of Catherine's teams uncovered an abandoned lab with full tanks of Alta Vitae gas. It's exactly one million bits per cubic meter. Before you get too excited, the only thing rarer than Alta Vitae gas is a reliable buyer. Dangerous stuff, acid for the nucleon in your cells. It's no good to anyone outside of a lab. Now get going. Catherine will brief you on the details when you check in with her at Fallbrook. One last thing. When you're on the job, keep a pair of eyes on the back of your head. Understood? Few laws and even fewer people to enforce them. If you're working for the right side, it's a fucking paradise. You'll do fine. Probably nothing to worry about. Probably. Yeah, see? We'll be fine. We're not going to have to hurt them, are we? Good, you're back. Not that I missed you. I assure you, I am not capable of such emotional capacity.
initiating initialization sequences. Greetings, customer. This SAM unit is unable to locate your registered information. Would you like to register your SAM? Registering new owner, Captain. SAM units live to clean and clean to live. Every SAM unit comes lean, mean, and ready to clean. Error. This unit is unable to process the service request. Ah! Customer, please repeat the command. All SAM units travel fully assembled in a 12 by 12 corrugated steel box. Did you know SAM units are capable of equipping regulation grade flamethrower nozzles? Upgrade your attachment today and get to firing away. Got stubborn stains? Leave them for SAM. Destination reached, Scylla. Ford had an asteroid mining operation out here. I wonder what happened to him. Looks like they started terraforming the place, but gave up halfway.
business! Yeah! That's what you get! Everyone all right? to shoot me down if you wanted an autograph. What was that? Tremendous work, friend. Here I was, readying a daring maneuver, and you've come and saved me the trouble. Symptoms detected. Elevated heart rate. Dilated pupils. Increased sweat production. Subject appears to be terrified. I'm not terrified, you bucket of bolts. That's victory sweat. Meds, I'm guessing. Pirates love bits, and unlabeled meds are worth a bundle. The one and only. Uh, wait, who's asking? Wanda didn't send you, did she? I wager she told you to say that, the sly old bird. I swear, land on Groundbreaker even a moment tardy, and that busybody's already been up your ass an hour. You tell her these Automex are coming, and sending a hired stooge to rescue me from certain peril only furthers my delay. No offense. Magnificent. And do please give Wanda my chilliest regards.
and quiet. Staying out of sight. Alright, let's dance!
Looks like some sort of habitation. Well, wouldn't the quiet get to you? Knowing there's nobody out there? No one at all? I didn't expect it. Looks like we're doing this! Nicely done. Not to worry, I take our ship's security highly seriously.
The Groundbreaker has approved our request for docking, Captain. You're free to disembark. Were I a gambling woman, I'd wager you're responsible for my mechanical safe return. I can't thank you enough. Keep hanging around and I'll begin to think you're here for me. What can I do for you? You have yourself a day then. I believe I hear Felix and Parvati discussing the latest Aetherwave serial. Living in a relay station all the way out here. Captain, this place is supposed to be empty, yeah? Because I got the queerest feeling. down.
Is he dead or? Oh, poor fella. You think he did it to himself, Captain? That's real sad. Welcome back. Do wipe the blood and space dust from your feet in the entry bay. Thank you. Destination reached. The Groundbreaker. advertisement for the following story my comm center already got an update ping from the backup relay i trust everything went smoothly thanks hmm that's odd the only messages in the queue are encrypted ones looking at the transmission logs the relay hasn't received a single unencrypted message in the past 36 months must be on account of some new security red tape well Whatever's the cause, the board and the Earth Minister will see it sorted. Thanks again for saving my derriere. I secured quite the payment authorization for you from Chief Jun Lei. Try not to spend it all in one place. Orbit above Stellar Bay, Captain. No blockade is a match for my piloting skills.
Hold on there. I gotta sign you in. Don't think I've seen you around. That means you must be new to Stellar Bay. You are new here, right? I knew it. See, I made what you call a logical deduction. You must have seen those UDL gunships on your way in. There's only three of them these days. Still, they tend to scare folk off. Wish more folk could say that. Gets awful quiet guarding a landing pad that never gets used. You may not have heard, you being new, but Stellar Bay hardly ever gets off-world traffic, us being cut off by the board and all. Which means I never get to do this part, but I've been practicing, so here goes. On behalf of Monarch Stellar Industries, welcome to Stellar Bay, home of the freshest Saltuna and Halcyon. Please state your name for the records. Aw, won't be like that. I never get to do this part. Please. Swell, there's one for the logs. I'm even gonna give you your own entry code. I'm not supposed to do that. It's against procedure, but Mr. Sanjar isn't so strict about the rules here. Besides, I got a lot of empty entries to fill. We don't get ship traffic in town. Only off-worlders who do make it out here are sublight. They got a base in Fallbrook. And thank the stars for them, or we would have run out of Rizzo's Purple Berry Crunch years ago. Oh, that'll just make Mr. Sanjar's day if you tell him. The board makes up lots of nasty stories about raptodons and cannibals and whatnot. But that's all outside our walls, mostly. Did he just say raptodons and cannibals? I can't wait! Oh, sure. It makes Stellar Bay sound like a rotten place, but it's not so bad. Get a good breeze going, and the sulfur smell mostly covers up the fishy smell. Anyway, Mr. Sanjar's got lots to say on that subject. Kinda goes over my head, though. Mr. Sanjar will be mighty pleased to meet you. If you see him over at headquarters, Maybe you could tell him I did a bang-up job of welcoming you? Oh, and if you're headed that way, maybe you could do me a favor? I got this Rizzo's Rangers Tosswell poster coming in on the next sublight shipment, signed by the Black Hole himself. Only I haven't heard anything in a while. You think you could check with Celia to see if it's come in? Boss, come on. Black Hole Birdie, the Hole Meister, the Hack Attack. That's Birdie Holcomb, only one of the greatest tossball hackers ever. I wonder if he's kin. Dad had family that worked for Rizzo's. I never got to meet them. Everyone's heard of him, even on Monarch. We still get some of the games. You've been living in a sulfur pit or something? You're real funny. Guess I don't feel so bad for missing what goes on in the rest of Stellar Bay. I couldn't really say I'm just a fan of the game. But the fancy collector types say the more people see these things, the less valuable they are. 
And I figure my poster's been passed around by more than a few people by now. Thanks a bunch! Celia works for Mr. Sanjar in the MSI building next to the bar. She's always there, so you can't miss her. What are the chances of all the times and places we could have been born? Yeah. We're here, light years from Earth, going about our lives. Every time the punch clock peels, a worker earns his meals. What are you talking about? Sorry, I thought you were quoting It's a Wonderful Directorate. bastard slippery right on account of its blood so it's it's sliding all over the place trying to crawl away getting so I can't tell the tell the blood from the mud but I gotta get in there get right in that baby wrap stomach and dig it out if so much as a drop of stomach acid got on that medallion I shit I don't know what I'd do might be I'd hunt every damn wrapped out there Right. What are you staring? Wait. You ain't from around here. Who are you? Ooh, charmer. Don't get a lot of that around here. Folks mostly grump at me about how I should join the MSI payroll. Nice change of pace. Buy me a drink, will you? What are you doing in Stellar Bay, stranger? Well, 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 well. Let's get down to brass nuts then, shall we? Brass... Wait, that ain't it. Brass rats? Let's... Let's talk business. I'm headed back out there after I sober up. You want a guide sooner than that? You have to get me something to clear my head. Outstanding! Our dispensary here maintains a stock of, uh, well, I don't rightly know what they are. Steroid or caffeine somethings? Pills. They're very good. I'm cut off for the month, on account of needing one just about every damn day. But I'm sure you've got your wily ways. Fetch me one and we'll be all set. Well, they work. We got a deal or what?
Could I get another advance, Mr. Nandi? Just make sure it's properly logged. I'll note it next to the others, sir. Greetings, and welcome to Monarch Stellar Industries, producers and purveyors of the finest salt tuna in Halcyon. What can I do for you today? Or is he not paying you on account of how he tried to fix the thing his own self, and busted it even worse, and then said you wasn't fixing it fast enough, so he's docking your wages again? Not that I got any prior experience with such. Not at all. Mr. Nandi treats us all right and pays us well. I just spent most of my paycheck on Raptodon acid. Laws, no! Sometimes it's canid teeth, or a mantis warm wings. Whatever Sebastian has in stock, really. Oh, I don't need any of it. It's also I can talk to Sebastian. He doesn't get going about much else. I reckon she's got a little bit of a squish on this fella. He's sort of the strong, silent type. Unfortunately, my apartment's kind of filling up with his stuff. And some of the neighbors are complaining about the smell. I couldn't! What if he says no? Hey, maybe you could ask him for me. I, I mean, a no would still be bad, but it won't be quite as embarrassing if you ask. Oh, Mr. Nandi's doing that thing where he breathes through his nose real slowly. I'd better get back to work. He doesn't talk much, but he's got this quiet intensity, you know? Like there's stuff going on inside his head that you have no idea about. Plus, he's got great legs. It's hard to find a man who doesn't skimp on lower body exercises. You think that's what I'm looking for? <laughs> You're funny. Sorry, sometimes I get carried away. Well. New business turns up at last. Celia, didn't I tell you our new statistics-based advertising model would be a hit? That you did, sir. How can yield improvements of 26.7% not quicken the pulse? How can 32% cost savings not moisten the loins? You've often posed these very questions. Clear my schedule. This newcomer has a meeting with me. Did you hear that power play, Celia? They don't make them like this anymore in Halcyon. I only hope you don't judge me by my handshake. Now, what business brings you here? Hiram? Why, he's probably still out at Devil's Peak. Not that he's had the courtesy to notify me, at any rate. But if you're here for him, I suppose that means you aren't here for Saltuna. Yes, that's it. Channel your anger. I only wish I could do the same. <laughs> Seems like you're having a rough time, Mr. Sanjar. Are you doing quite all right? Oh, don't worry on my account. This is merely the latest in a long line of professional erotic and athletic disappointments. I had hoped that livening up our advertisements with enticing figures would draw the other corporations back to our bosom, but it seems we're back to the drawing board. Thanks to the so-called Hazard Clause, Monarch has been cut off from the board's resources and protection for ten years now. now we've kept ourselves in business by trading with individual corporations, but given the off-the-books nature of those transactions, such arrangements are precarious.
You talk like Graham. Can't imagine why you'd sneer at the notion of a free colony. Could it be because you're an agent of the establishment? I used to be young and idealistic too, but you can't run a city on high-minded ideals. Well, Mr. Nandi here has a rather ingenious plan to get MSI restored to the board. On our terms, mind you. But will that help the people here, Mr. Sanjar? Keep them fed and safe? That's precisely what I'm trying to do. And if our advertising scheme hasn't borne fruit, then perhaps it's time we took matters into our own hands. It's true, our Celia is an alarmingly competent middle manager. At any other company, she'd be wasted in data entry. The plan she refers to is a two-pronged approach, and the first part involves seeing Stellar Bay properly defended. Not long, but the devil is always in the details. And the salient detail here is a Bolt 52 cartridge. If you can get us what we need to rejoin the board, starting the Bolt 52, we'll be able to become one of the most productive and secure cities in Halcyon. And you'll have a powerful ally on the board. Why, one of the strongest defenses in Halcyon. An extremely powerful ordinance. I was starting to get bored listening to you until you said the phrase extremely powerful ordinance. It is quite the rush. I'll need to gather some supplemental materials, but I mustn't get ahead of myself. You do tend to do that. The Bolt 52 will be in the old arms building southwest of town, which used to be part of Stellar Bay before we had to move our walls in. And these days, it's overrun with marauders and raptodons. Do be careful. I've lost more than a few people to marauders and raptodons out there. Oh, and while you're at it, there should be a terminal in the arms building with some dangerous information. Perhaps you could delete it so it doesn't fall into the wrong hands. What can I do for you? I see. And was his delivery of the MSI authorized greeting up to snuff? Well, that's excellent. I'll see that your feedback makes it into his review. What else can I do for you? Then it's good that I keep such meticulous notes. I've asked myself the same thing many times, especially seeing as the legal mechanisms we employed were part of the board's own bylaws. Not intentionally, though that's technically true. For many years, this planet was home to as many corporations as Terra 2. But back then, it was known as Terra 1. As you may have noticed, this planet has more than its share of hazards. And as the other corporations began to tally their losses, they decided to pull out. Our leadership at the time certainly wanted to. But there were others of us who saw an opportunity. The chance to improve working hours and conditions, to reform MSI from the ground up. It's humane, but it's also good business sense. Exhausted, sick, and malnourished workers are not productive workers. Even a cursory review of the data bears that out. I hope you'd treat them nice, whether it was good business or not, Mr. Sanjar. That's what being a community means. Treating people right, because it's the right thing to do. Word of advice, Sanjar. If Parvati's got something to say, you do well to listen close. Mm -hmm. A noble thought, Miss Holcomb. Unfortunately, noble thoughts rarely sway board policy. Anyway, we learned of a loophole in the corporate bylaws that would allow MSI to claim ownership of the entire planet once the other corporations pulled out, creating the perfect environment for us to enact these new reforms. Hmm? 
Oh, well, there were surely other junior executives with more open minds, though none of them had the temperament to handle the paperwork. But I was keeping my tone flat and maintaining eye contact. You weren't supposed to notice I was avoiding the subject. This is why you've never been good with presentations, sir. <sighs> Very well. Many, many years ago, Graham Bryant and I used to be collaborators of sorts. Indeed, for all the good it did. MSI's then leadership wasn't enthusiastic. They insisted we'd be relocating to Terra 2 along with everyone else. In a manner of speaking, many of us stayed behind in an act of quiet but firm defiance. As the most senior executive remaining, I ended up in charge of what was left of MSI. I moved forward with our planned reforms as well as our strategy to assume ownership of the planet. Yet not long after I renamed it Monarch, the other corporations dislodged us from the board and began an official campaign to paint us as lawless savages. I don't think I realized how far they'd stoop. Everything we did was legal and above board. We followed their rules, and yet they still found reasons to declare us outlaws. Your first mistake was expecting the board to cut you a fair deal. I understand the sentiment, but if we can't rely on some sort of framework, then what do we have? I do think there's something useful in a governing body like the board. Something that keeps us from anarchy, but I dearly wish it functioned differently. Why wouldn't anyone? They own nearly all the resources and infrastructure in Halcyon. Yeah, and once you go back to them, they'll own your dignity too. To be on the board is to be part of the colonial community, and being cut off means slow strangulation. a man to put pride before progress. If membership on the board can ease our hardships and provide us with opportunities, then that's the path I mean to pursue. Besides, I'm hopeful that additional leverage on our part will allow us a more equitable relationship. Don't get ahead of yourself, sir. Yes, yes, it'll be easier to explain once we have the Bolt 52. My hope is to maintain the reforms we've managed here, and who knows? Perhaps once we're restored, we could spread them to other corporations. It's a legal provision that gives the board the authority to cordon off any planet or location that it deems dangerous. Sounds like the board gave themselves the power to arrest an entire planet. They would say it's for the greater good. Monarch may be dangerous, but it's hardly the wasteland the board describes it to be. Whatever the board's goals, the greater good has little part in them. As far as I'm concerned, the less said about Graham, the better. Graham seemed like a reasonable man years ago. and We both agreed that MSI's treatment of its workers was untenable. I thought reforms would be enough. I didn't realize you wanted to abolish the corporate system entirely. What can I do for you?
Velma seem out of sorts to you? She's always cranky. No, I mean, more than usual. Wouldn't know. I made it a point to stay out of her way. If Velma's capable of running the warehouse, she can stop annoyed. Don't be so hard on her. Hello, dearie. Why, I don't believe I've seen you before. And with sweet cheeks like those, I'd remember. What can Auntie Abigail do for you? She works over at the fishery next door. Quite the hard worker, but she's got a bit of a temper. Why, just the other day, I heard her shouting from here. I can't imagine what set her off. Oh, but here I go again, running my mouth when it's none of my business. Was there something else you needed? Yes, indeed. Someone's got to keep Stella Bay's people healthy and energized. Oh, but I am. I get to see plenty of my neighbors here, and I do dearly love a little gossip. The Charmer. Welcome back. Drink, chat, or business? All of the above? More or less dangerous than a steady supply of alcohol. Give it here. Whew, that hits the spot. Right in the, uh, oh, no, there it is. There it is. Yes. We're in business. Let's go. Great. Where to? Oh, Hiram? I ain't checked in on that man in an age. He's running the giant radio tower we lovingly call Devil's Peak. We'll be going south and west, mostly along the road till we're past Fallbrook. Out there, there's a western slope that'll lead us through some, uh, some fun. You like hunting, right? That's fun. If you're more of a spelunker, Rotting River will take you into the mountain caverns. We can discuss options when we get closer. That said, uh, three's already a crowd. I don't mind waiting somewhere until you got a spot open. I hope you like being part of our crew, Nyoka. We're real excited to have you. So you keep Monarch safe, huh? That's real honorable work, Miss Nyoka. Oh, no, no. Monarch ain't safe, even with me around. I've just got intimate knowledge of its dangers and an abundance of fortitude. Folks hire me because I know what you can shoot and what you ought to run from. That's a mistake you only get to make once.
Wrapped mask and canid eyes, right here. Hello, stranger. Can I interest you in a raptodon tongue? Or maybe some canid toenails? You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts. Sebastian, you ever get your hands on those pheromone sacks? Manipillers ain't gonna hunt themselves, you know. I must have hunted a dozen, but I couldn't find a single sack on any of them. Must be looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Manipillers ain't got pheromone sacks. I just told him that so he'd stop asking me for advice. At least I'm getting a good haul of claws in the process. You're in good hands, traveling with Monarch's top merc. Still, if you want any rap glands or manti claws, I've got you covered. Oh, good. Celia hasn't come by in a few days, so I haven't sold much. You look like a man who's looking for some mostly fresh animal parts? Huh. I haven't seen her in a few days. But I've been meaning to ask her how that raptid on acid is working out. I hope it's working okay, because no one else really seems interested in this stuff. Nice of you to say. I like her too. Wait, I see what's going on. She put you up to this so she could get a discount, hmm? Oh, no, that's not it at all. She's smitten with you. You smited her. Smote? Smoot? Don't get me wrong. I'd like to give her a discount. She's a real fine lady. Always talks nice and slow, so I understand. But if I give her one, I won't hardly make a bit, on account of no one else having any use for raptodon tongues. You sound pretty sure. And she is awful nice. Give her a chance. Give yourself a chance. Take her someplace nice. Okay. I'll do it. Once her shift ends, we'll go someplace nice. Maybe to Chef Raymond's. That's the spirit, Sebastian. Be yourself. Between you and me, Captain, I'm not sure Miss Celia knows him too well. But we can hope, right? I want them to be happy. Have you talked to Sebastian yet? What did he say? You know, sending you is the first bright idea I've seen from that man, because I told him to stop bothering me about it a week ago. I still don't know anything about it, but if you want to help him, Velma's the one to ask. She's in the warehouse. But I'll warn you, Grim wore her patience thin a long time ago. Oh, have you talked to him? Okay, but how did he say it? Did he sound excited? Or like he was just agreeing to it? Was he like, yay, a date with Celia. I've secretly been waiting for this. Or was it more, sure, I don't have anything else going on. Right. I've just got to be myself. Just my normal self. Ah, look at me going on. I'm sure you've got other things to do and Mr. Nandi's giving me that back to work look. Anyhow, thank you.
Hey, Velma, I got your caffeinoid pills. You're a lifesaver. Hope Abigail didn't give you a hard time. Just the usual. Any word on Braxton? Nothing. Don't know how much longer I can cover for him either. Give me those pills, will you? Here you go. You know, you might consider a real night's sleep instead. Look, you can tell Catherine the new shipment will be ready when it's ready, all right? She's welcome to come up here and pack boxes herself if she's in such a hurry. Did she now? Well, I can see I was mistaken. Because if Catherine really had sent you, there'd be a lot more expletives in your message. I hope you can forgive my temper. This job has been running me ragged lately. First, my autoloader foreman stages a walkout, and now my chief pescatological health manager is missing. This again? I swear, this is the last time I contract for any special requests. You can tell Grimm his poster came in. You can also tell him I got a better offer for it. So now it's going to Nell. That about cover it? She runs the bedding parlor across the way. Nice professional lady. She asked me about the poster once. Just once. Made a real generous offer too. Damn right it is. No, I paid Sublight for it, so it's mine. And when Nell pays me for it, it'll be hers. Grimm may have asked for the poster, but it's not his until I take his money. It's staying locked up in my office until Nell shows with her money. Fine by me. Braxton. He's in charge of getting the fish fat, but also making sure they don't get too many tumors. He's a real wizard with pharmaceuticals, but he has creative notions of working hours. Comes with living in a free colony, I guess. I would if I weren't busy here picking up his slack. Since you don't seem to be constrained yourself, maybe you could check up on him. He lives in the apartments. Tell him Velma said to get his lazy ass down here, or she might start noticing those extra drugs he's been taking from supply. Something else on your mind? Caleb Herrick runs the autoloader operators. He thinks I don't pay them enough for flipping switches and turning dials. So the job's easy, but you're not doing it? Something smells here. I mean, everything smells in here, but something's fishy. Uh, wait. He and his whole crew walked out. Say they won't come back unless I pay them more. Because we've got a budget, all right? And in case you haven't noticed, MSI doesn't exactly have a lot of spare bits on hand. You mind slapping him around a little while you're at it? I'm joking. Mostly. Unless you can do it without hurting his job performance. If you can find a way to get him back to work, I'll make it worth your while. Check the Yacht Club. He's usually there. Stealing's such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the Saltuna, fat and mostly tumor free. Sublight boss out of Fallbrook. Handles most goods that come in or out of Stellar Bay. Has a mouth like a ground six spacer. Unless you're here to tell me he's agreed to do his job again, I've got nothing to say. Oh, 
hard workers? They turn dials and flip switches. The machines do all the actual work. I'll wager she don't pay those folks that maintain the mechanicals decent, neither. Caleb and his crew have it better than anyone else around here, I'll tell you that much. I don't have the bits for it, plain and simple. Besides, if I make an exception for him, I gotta do the same for everyone. If Caleb wants to keep this job, he'd better get back to it. I'm about ready to hire sublight contractors at this rate. For running me ragged while he takes an extended leave at the bar? Not on your life. Maybe so, but I bet you Caleb runs out of bits first. Then he'll have to come back. He says he's got a stash to tide his crew over. Could be he's all talk, but if the money's real, I bet you he keeps it at home, near the diner. You'd steal from your own people? That's low, ma'am. That's business. Someone's gotta keep the lights on. Fine by me. Sure can, if you wanna pay me more than Nell's offering. Sure, and once you finish helping me, then we can talk about the poster. Fine by me. It smells like rat. Oh, it does work. I bought some musk from Sebastian to cover up the saltiness.
give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. You spat in your spirits, Velma. You notice my mood? I'm surprised you can see straight today. I could be seeing triple and I'd still think you're being unkind. I just might find it funnier. Will you try wrangling half a ton of dead fish with decades old equipment and see what it does for your disposition? Anyway, what do you folks need? You're the new face. Wow, you must be up on all the latest tossball games. So who do you follow? Wait, don't tell me. You look like a Hammersmith Thunder fan. No, Glacial Age Mammoths. I'd heard they'd gotten a new hacker. Is that why everyone's making such a fuss about you? But what are you doing on Monarch? Maybe we're not so isolated as I thought. So, what can I do for you? Graham's always filling the airwaves with this propaganda. Like it's done him any good. All it means is the tossball games get to us in fragments. Makes him real hard to watch. Signed by the black hole himself. There's no way I could pass that up. Why, did you want to see it? I don't have it yet. I'm waiting on a few customers to pay up before I can give Velma the bits. You mean dopey landing pad Grim? I didn't know he and Mr. Nandi were friends. I guess that changes things. Fine. Tell Velma that I don't want the poster anymore. I'll find something else to hang in my shop. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts. Gosh, this old girl's in a rough way. Even old Bess in Edgewater was in better shape than this. Hey, you want to try running a cannery with obsolete machinery? You be my guest. Um, sorry ma'am, I wasn't trying to be rude, it's just... Your flanging apparatus isn't making a strong flange, so your sealer isn't sealing right and... Oh. I see what you're saying. Huh. I'll have to try that. Anyway, what do you folks need? Sure can, if you want to pay me more than Nell's offering. That's a surprise. Tossball being part of her business and all. Take the poster then. And if I never hear another word about it, it'll be too soon. Something else on your mind?
Have you had time to check on that poster yet? I keep wondering if it's come in. Would you look at that? The Rizzo's logo is nice and bright, and you can still smell the ink on Mr. Holcomb's signature. I can't thank you enough. Still, you can have the bits I was going to spend at the bar this week. And you know what? Take my old toss ball blocker, too. Never get the chance to use it these days. Oh! Oh, sorry, sorry. Just spooked me, was all. Even Stellar Bay ain't safe these days. What's the world coming to? You startled me. Don't sneak up on a person like that, huh? Braxton. I've never even heard of a Braxton. Got nothing for you, sorry. Oh. In that case, he told me he was delivering to this house in the ruins south of town. Whole family had fallen sick and he had some meds on hand. So maybe look for him there? I'll be straight with you. Folk who disappear in the wilderness generally aren't able to come back. Don't get your hopes up. Watch your step if you venture outside the walls.
New face, huh? You from Offworld? A ship captain? Well, I'll be. Here, let me buy you a drink. Consider it an MSI welcome. Why don't you grab a chair? Sit a spell and revel with us. By the smell, he's been reveling enough for you both already. Me and my friends have taken our destiny into our own hands. We're untethered, free of responsibility and worldly cares. Well, as long as we don't run out of bits. But until the windfall's gone, we're riding high. See, we just walked out on our work. Had enough, we did. So now we're striking. It ain't any one thing but the sum of it all, having to work longer shifts for less bits. And the wages we do earn don't cover as much as they used to. Our supervisor, Velma, goes on and on about quarterly profits and meeting quotas. But that ain't what Sanjar promised us. Velma refuses to negotiate, so we're refusing to work. We won't go back until she agrees to pay us fair and proper. Us on Monarch, we're free from the board, you know? We have the right to lobby for better hours and pay. Sure thing. What did you want to discuss? I never meant to call for anyone's head on a pike. Velma's not my favorite person, but she ain't been cruel to us. Devil it all. Now you got me feeling sorry for her. Fine. I guess we'll go back to work to save Velma's job. We'll find a better time to negotiate our wages. Tell Velma not to worry. We'll look out for her. I hear those rich people in Byzantium pay a handsome bit for rap musk. Bet they also pay to make it stink less. Supposedly, it uh, makes you more attractive for, you know. Trust me, no one's going near you like this. I'd give you a friendlier welcome, but I'm up to my elbows and salt tuna guts.
You knocked any sense into him yet? Well, that's... awful nice of him. Sure wouldn't have expected that. Thanks for your help. You've gotten me out of a tight spot here. Take this for your efforts. Honest work deserves honest pay. Something else on your mind? Stealing such a nasty word. Let's call it skimming. And yeah, let's just say I've noticed the sterile biotics we use for the fish would get used a little faster on Braxton shifts. We're not like those corporate towns where you get fined for sleeping on the wrong side of the bed. Besides, the Spacer's Choice stuff we use is cheap enough. And Braxton knows how to get the salt tuna, fat and mostly tumor free. isn't the famous hacker enjoying Stellar Bay? What can I do for you? Poor Isaac. I was wondering why I hadn't seen him in a few days. I'd really like to help. Isaac was a sweet fellow, even if he did have terrible teeth. I don't know for sure, but I saw Elijah and his buddies pushing Isaac around. They're hooligans from Fallbrook. They sweep into town, drop supplies off behind the warehouse, and spend the rest of their stay getting rowdy over tossball games. They usually loiter in the alley behind the yacht club. They're not allowed in the bar anymore. I bet you anything Isaac ran into trouble with one of them. Mr. Sanjar will be pleased to hear about it when you're done. I know he gets fed up with the Fallbrook bullies, but there's not much he can do. I wonder sometimes what they're doing on other colonies. Uh-huh. Think they're watching the same videos, following the same tossball games? Mm-hmm. You're not listening to a word, are you? Look, my back hurts and everything smells like fish. I just want to enjoy it. are you? This ain't your alley. Hey! What are you doing here? This is our secret alley. Berta already pissed by those crates to market. Listen, that purple tooth twerp had it coming. Not that anyone has proof. And not that it's any of your business.
see you've had a sobering effect on our friend Nyoka. Sir, please stop. Forgive me, Celia. I couldn't help myself. Anyway, what can I do for you? But that's terrible. What happened? But that means we won't be able to log their testimonies. If there's one thing I've been hoping to re-establish in Stellar Bay, it's proper documentation for legal matters. Always a shame when tempers get the better of good sense. Still, your intervention in the matter is much appreciated. Please consider this payment for your services. You ever been off Monarch, Nyoka? Before you met the captain, I mean. Nah, I mostly just drank and hunted. As soon as you... Hey, Cap. Got a minute? Hey, got a favor to ask you. Figure while we're out here in the wilderness anyhow, we might stop in on an old friend of mine. Preferably before we get to Hiram's. It's on the way, don't worry. You don't seem the type to run off and get yourself killed, and I could use the help. Well, we'll see about that. I'll be up front with you. I hate asking for help. I hate it. Every time I give someone the opportunity to disappoint me, they seem to make it their most immediate goal. But this, what I'm thinking, it's dangerous. Really? Here I was stealing myself for inevitable rejection. I used to run with a band of hunters, friends, six of us. We were on Monarch when the corporations pulled out and we helped a lot of people pick up the pieces. I haven't seen two of them in years and the rest I know to be dead. I'd like to gather their effects and bury them all in the same places, like the family we once were. I saw it happen. Hell, one of them was in my arms at the time. His name was Hayes, and he's our first stop. I buried him a ways from our encampment. I'll show you where he rests. He had a medallion in his effects. That's what I'll bring home to Barry. A long time ago, we built an encampment in one of Monarch's cave systems. Trouble is, a mana queen showed up and kicked us all out. If we can find Rebecca and Anders, they'll know how to lure her out. 
Then we kill the bitch and bury everyone's medallions together. <laughs> Thanks, Cap. <laughs>